Hello YouTube, just thought I'd do a quick video again. I'm getting good at the quick videos, not like me. Um, just a quick show and tell something I made recently. It's a leather uh, phone case. I wanted to show you a bit more about it. I'll be going close in a minute so you can see all the, the details. Um, I'll just give a quick rundown of how I made it. I will do some tutorial videos, but I'm not that great at leather craft yet. So I didn't want to steer people in the wrong direction, but I'm getting there. And um, this is the first piece that I'm really chuffed with, I think. It's as good quality as, as I hope to get. So um, yeah, I'll keep working from there really. So it's a mobile phone slip case. It's a friction fit, so it doesn't fall out. Um, and it's just the right size for the friction for the phone, um, which is quite tricky to work out. And then it's just two, two layers. It's got a hole in the bottom um, for charging while it's in the case, because it bugs me when you can't charge phones when they're in the case, so put that there. But also you push it and it's to, to push the phone out as well um, to get it in and out. So it's quite simple. Um, this phone's a real pain because it's a, an LG G4, it's a great phone, the camera on it's amazing, all the pictures I do is on this phone, but the it's doubly curved, so it's curved that way, and on the back it's curved that way. Um, so to get the case to fit is really, really tricky. So I tried a new technique and it worked perfectly, it's an absolute perfect fit. So I'll explain that as well in a minute. So um, I just bring the camera around and show you it in detail and show you how I made it and some of the tools I used to make it and the process roughly and then uh, maybe I'll do a tutorial one day, we'll see. Okay, so this is the case. Uh, you can see it's got dragon scales on it. I wanted some dragon scales on it. I wanted it to be um, sort of mottled effect. Uh, it's got my logo on for the first time, which I've had made up in brass. Uh, so that's come out really cool, really like that. Uh, stamped in. Uh, all this is hand carved and um, stamped and everything. So I'll just take the phone out. So uh, to start with is getting the size. The size is really hard. So what you have to do, or the best way I've found doing it, is getting some strips of leather. So get some long, maybe this long strips of leather. Um, about this wide, not very wide, two of them. And you take your phone or whatever you want to wrap and you put them one, one above and one below like this and then you pinch at the sides, okay? And then you put a clip on the side and from that you can work out how much leather it takes to go there, round the side and off again and then a bit for the stitching. And if the back's curved it'll take that into account and off to the side and stitch in, so it's clamped both sides. Um, and also the thickness of the leather affects this curvature at the edge, so you really need the leather you're gonna to use to make the case uh, to do the measurement with. Um, uh, so you do that, and then you mark it where you want it, and that will give you your actual leather length or width of the leather. And then you do the same this way as well, because obviously going around the end is gonna take a lot of leather. Um, and you want the height just right. So you can see on this one now, even though it's quite a bit bigger than the phone itself, see? But when you push it in, you can see you've got the thickness of the leather, the stiffness of the leather, and it's got a fold round, and it gives some friction. And obviously it's held together where the stitching is. It's just the right length, see? And that includes this kind of bit here where it goes down and round. So you can work all that out. See when you look in, it doesn't actually go to the bottom of the case. Obviously you've got a bit where the leather's bending, so there's a little gap there. So you've got to take all that into account. Um, and then you can see the gap here is just enough for the bend in the leather on both sides. And then the stitching line which holds it and that's glued as well. So <clears throat> you get the size of your leather. Next thing to do is make a pattern. So this is my pattern, just on paper. So you, I do it on grid paper because it's easier to, to work out. But you do it exactly right. So this is uh, exactly right size. Put all your curves in. Put your, I put a 
a dotted line for the stitching. I wanted to really do a close stitch into the edge. So um, it's only about three millimeters from the edge, if that. Uh, just to try, because it's really hard to do, so I wanted to try and do it. You can see it's really close to the edge. Uh, so a thin border, and then you draw on your pattern. In this case, I want to drag and scale, so you draw, draw everything on. As much detail as you can. I leave these corners square, because it's easier for marking out and stuff. And then I cut out the front panel, <coughs> and cut a piece of leather out for the back, but left it large, because you trim it at the end. And then I cut the front one to the right size. Um, and then you soak it in water, take it, put it in water so it's really wet, and you leave it for about four hours until the surface is almost dry, but the core of the leather in the middle is still wet. And that's called casing the leather. And when you get to that point, the exact moisture content, then it's the best um, for cutting and things. So you put, put some, well, first of all, you take the pattern, get some tracing paper, and you trace out your pattern on tracing paper, and you see through it. And then what I do is I get me wet leather that's been cased, you put it on your stone, or whatever you're working on, and I put a piece of cling film over the top to stop the moisture bleeding through. And then I put this over the top of the cling film. So you've got wet leather, cling film, stencil, or pattern. And then I tape it with masking tape all around. And then you go over every line, not, not the border, but every line you're going to carve with a, like a dull pointed scribe. You can see where I've gone in, maybe. You can see every line's been dented a bit. You can see on the back there we go. So every line's been dented. Um, and that leaves a mark on the leather. And then you get your swivel knife. This is a swivel knife. You have to hone the edge, just really sharp, super sharp carbon blade. Um, the top swivels round. Um, so you put that on your th finger, finger and thumb, and you can cut and swivel really fast, really easy. So on here you can you can dig it in and then swivel around to get to the edge. And every line that I've marked, I've cut. So first of all, you cut them all, and that leaves a like a let me can't fix it. Yeah, it leaves a sort of V shape groove. So you do that all over. And then on mine, I did some very fine lines. You see them there? Just gives a little bit more texture. It's like little cracks in the dragon scales. See? So I did that. Uh, and then I used a stamp, different types of stamp, um, edge beveler for uh, textures, edge beveler. So you stamp down the lines that you've cut. So this side is pushed in, and this side is left uh, to the height of the leather. Uh, that's how it gives the effect. You can see, yeah, just about to see it there. And then I used another stamp to give some texture onto the scales. Um, so I hammered all that out. And then I put the line round the edge. So I put this line ring round, and then I stamped that as well to give it a bit more relief all the way round. Um, and then you let that dry. And then I prepared the back as well. Uh, wet that down and then I've had a stamp made so I made the stamp um, to put in there. And then you let all that dry uh, both sides. This one's bigger still than the front. Um, <clears throat> and you dye it. So this time I was using dye on a cloth and rubbing it in. So that's how I got the um, this darker than the stamped bit um, just by rubbing it in and using the relief on the taut cloth to to produce the effect and it come out quite nice. Seeing the different sort of colours, different thicknesses, and it's not totally even, it's a little bit uneven, uh, which is what I wanted. So you do all the dyeing, um, and then you roughen the edges, oh, inside, it's dyed inside as well on the back, and I just rub that down with some beeswax just to smooth it off and to stop any dye coming off. You buff it all once the dye is dried, um, and then you put glue, contact adhesive down these edges inside, stick the two together, 
clamp it up and let that dry. Then when all that's dry, um, you uh, what I did next was the back was still bigger than the front, so what I did next was got my pricking iron and punched all the holes for the stitching all the way around. Uh, you hammer those in, so they're exactly the same both sides. Um, and then I stitched that together by hand using a wax polyester thread. When I've done that, then then I trimmed the back because what the stitching kind of pulls the edge in a bit sometimes. So I left it and then I trimmed it, sanded the edges with sandpaper, um, and then I used a beveler to bevel this edge so it's not completely square edge. It's kind of a little bit rounded. Um, these are the edge bevelers, uh, and then it's got like two notches, and this is sharp. So you just run that along the edge of the, the leather and it carves off a, the corner of the leather. So you do that all the way around. And then you, um, what did I do next? Yep, then I wet the edge. Um, did I do that first? No, next thing I did was after sanding, I stained the edge with the same dye. So all the way around, stained it, let that dry. Uh, and then you wet the edge with water and I put saddle soap on and then you burnish it with a burnisher. So this is just, uh, um, you produce a lot of friction, it lines all the fibers along the edge and you get a nice slick edge. Okay. So you slick all the edges. Um, and then I put beeswax on the edges and slick it again so the heat of the, the rubbing melts the beeswax into the edge. It's a nice waterproof edge. Um, and I beeswax all of this um, I use a cream actually, a beeswax cream, and rub all that in, and then beeswax the top, rub all that in, and then use a brush over the top to make sure there's nothing in all the gaps and stuff. So it's totally um, sealed, waterproof, nothing's going to come off on your phone. Um, it's all totally sealed and things, so that's good. Um, uh, and then you just give it a rub over with a cloth, soft cloth, just to polish it up, and, uh, and you're done. So you can see why leather stuff takes uh, costs a lot of money because all the work that goes into it, there's loads of steps, there's a lot of drying and preparing and getting stuff ready. It's very time consuming. All the tooling, every line has to be cut and uh, hit with a mallet and a punch and stamp and things like that. So all the lacing, hand stitching, it all takes a very long time. So that's why leather items cost a lot of money. Uh, but you do end up with something very nice. It protects the phone really well. Uh, you could drop that and this will protect the corners of the phone. Uh, it will hit here before it hits here. So that's the design for it. Um, and this, this top is open so you can grab it if you need to grab it in there. Um, yeah, it's just a, I'm really happy with it. Really pleased the way it turned out. It's a little bit different. Um, looks nice. You won't see anything else like it. That's the best thing with the handmade stuff. It's all unique. And... Uh, there you go, one phone case. That's the phone case, really pleased with it. I've made loads of belts now, I'm starting to do more phone cases and then I'll go on to pouches and bags and, and other gear and maybe some clothing, I don't know yet. And we'll see how it goes, but uh, yeah, really pleased with it. So just a quick whiz tour through how to make it. I'll do a more detailed one at some point so you can see all the steps and how it's done. Um, there you go, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid. Cheers, bye.